So it's only a year since version 19 public beta was announced and we've already got a version 20. The Blackmagic development team have absolutely smashed it again. This is full of fantastic features, AI stuff, color management things, productivity tools that are gonna make your life even easier. There's so much to show you. I'm just gonna to focus today on the color page. So let's go and take a look. So the first feature I wanna show you in DaVinci Resolve 20 is one of the many new AI features. And this one is the Magic Mask. Now, this is an actual job I've bought in and we used Magic Mask on version 19 for this and if I just scroll forward what I'll show you here's the node that it's on this is from a channel 5 and Netflix job and we had problems with the magic mask and I've got here to show you so I'm going to reveal what we use the magic mask for we just wanted to drop that background back so I use the magic mask and it looks absolutely great as I move forward you'll see here as a hand comes up the issue we have is we get this kind of haloing around and I could not clean it up. We spent a long time trying to get the Magic Mask to work better and that was the result. So that part of the clip actually had to go to VFX. Now, when I've imported this node tree in and this clip, it's recognized that it was done in version 19. And if I go to the Magic Mask tool here, you'll see that it says Legacy Object Mask. So if I remove that mask, it will then replace it with the brand new one. So the minute it says AI Magic Mask, Watch this, I'm gonna do a new version first. So I'm gonna click on here. I'm gonna add a new version so we can compare. And then I'm gonna remove the Magic Mask, the original one, like so. And what you get now is it says AI Magic Mask 2. So this is the version 20 Magic Mask. Now watch what it does here. I'm gonna add some points on here so it knows where the mask is. Now you don't get that spline thing anymore. You get these dots. So you just put these dots on and it does a brilliant job of working out what the image is. So if I zoom into that a little bit and show you, you can see we've got this little bit of work needs doing here. It's not perfect, but I could spend a bit more time getting that right. Now what I'm gonna do, if I come back here, I'll show you some of the new tools. We've got these brush tools now. So I can click in here and using the brush tool, you can change the size of them like so. And I can use these tools to actually fine tune that mask. So let's click in here and do that sort of thing. And okay, I didn't do a very good job of that. Let's just undo that. But what I wanna show you is we're only in faster mode. I'm gonna switch this into better mode and watch this. So let's go to better. Let's bring it up and look at that. That is absolutely amazing on there. Okay, so I'm gonna come back down and uh, let's just come off that tool there. And if I go to larger screen, that is with the new Magic Mask, the new AI Magic Mask. Absolutely fantastic. That would be good to go. We wouldn't need to do any effects on that at all. Let me just show you the previous version. That's the version 19 mask. And that is the brand new mask. Absolutely fantastic. So the next effect I want to show you also has had AI improvement. I'm going to click on the effects here and I'm going to grab a depth map. I'm going to drag and drop this on. And what I want to do is sort of bring this subject here and this to the foreground. And the new AI depth map is far more accurate than the previous one. So watch this. I'm gonna click in here. Let's adjust our levels. And we can adjust our near and far limits as we could before. And now if we go to isolate specific depth, we get much more accuracy. So if I'm my target depth here, is gonna be our subjects and we're nearly there already. I'm just gonna bring back that far limit. And that is pretty good straight away. It only needs a little bit of adjustment now, maybe a little bit more tolerance. I could window that little bit off, but we're getting absolutely fantastic results with this new AI depth map. So let's use this to help our image now. So what I'm gonna do is take off the preview. I'm gonna invert it so we're dealing with the background, not the foreground. And if I go to my HDR tool, let's just adjust our exposure. And we can bring that whole background down now, which is gonna help our subject just pop in the image. So probably my favorite new feature is found in the color warper. There's our traditional color warper, like that. And we've got a third one now called chroma warp. And what this does is really organically manipulate your colors. So watch what happens when I select his suit. I've got two modes here, point to point and the natural mode. So I'm gonna to go to natural and I click on his suit. And you see here, I really can organically change the hue and the saturation of his suit there. So if I change it to be purple, we can go to exposure here as well and play with that. And we can adjust our chroma range so we don't get any fringing coming in here. It's a really cool tool. Now this point to point one, what this is doing is if I just reset that, if we click on the point to point, we can select his suit. And then what it does is it doesn't include all this range. It literally goes to the new target point. So let's make it more sort of red. Now this would be quite hard to do with the natural mode because we'd be picking up all this skin tone in here. And if you do pick up anything, you can use the isolation tool here and just isolate out. So we're getting a little bit of bleed into here. 
Let's just isolate that and that's great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that using the traditional color warper and show you the difference. But you can see here, this is fantastic. We can get rid of all this edging by using our chroma range here. Let's click back on our selection and just check we've got everything included in there. And what I'm going to do is make a new version of this. And I'm going to do that using the traditional color warper. So let's click on here, select your suit. Now what I'm going to do is push that over to the reds. And let me show you the difference. If I go full screen here now, let's get rid of that. And I'll show you the, this is the traditional color warper and this is using the new chroma warp. Now what I am noticing is a little bit of bleed in her hair here. So what we can do is come out of there. We can go back to the isolation tool and just select all this area here. And the next thing I want to show you is actually in color management. So if we click down here, we can go to ACES and you'll see now that they've introduced ACES 2.0. So this is great. ACES 2.0 gives better tonality. It has more output transforms, but they've gone one stage beyond that as well. So if I just cancel that, in our effects palette, you'll see four new effects and these are OCIO support. So this is open color IO support. This is a really popular open source format. It's really popular with ACES users and it allows far better color management in very complex pipelines such as VFX workflows. So it's really great to see this integrated in DaVinci Resolve. So the next thing I wanna show you is not an effect, it's to do with the interface. So I'm gonna click on this shot here. I'm gonna take off that depth map. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change our format to be vertical resolution. So let's have a look at this. I'm gonna to go to the edit page. I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna to change to portrait mode. And obviously what we have to do now is zoom into that image to make it fit in portraits, something like that. And I now do the sort of repositioning and all that stuff. So what I can do is go down here. This has been here for a little while, but you've got the smart reframe. And that has now adjusted that shot to fit exactly right based on the subject it's looking at. And if I now go back to the color page, wait till you see this, the interface has had a complete overhaul. So we now have this really beautiful vertical inlay window and everything's just been rearranged to maximize that view. So the last thing I wanna show you is nothing to do with color at all. I'm gonna to go to the edit page and I've got a piece of music in here. This is from Audio and I can get you discount on audio license. The link is in the description, but let's say I want to shorten this piece of music. The best way to do that would be to either line up the waveforms, which is how I do it traditionally, or use this new feature that actually shows you the beats. So let me just expand that out a little bit for you. I'm gonna zoom in. And if we can see the beats, it's a lot easier to chop sections out. So I'm gonna right and click on here. There's a new feature here, show music beats. It's gonna analyze that clip. And now we've got all the beat markers. So it's really easy to go in here, make an edit. And when I trim, it sticks to the beats. Now I'm gonna undo that because that is still, whilst that's a great addition, I still have to manually do that. What we can do is use this new tool. If I click on here and go to AI music editor, what this allows me to do, type in a new target length or just trim light. So I'm gonna type in a new duration. Let's make it one minute 37 and I'm gonna adjust it. And what it's done now is it's put a break in at this point here. So it's analyzed the clip and put the best break point in to get me one minute 37. I mean, that was absolutely seamless, but it's also given me other versions. So going by the beats, so it's in time, I've got a one minute 40 version. I've got a one minute 35 and I've got a one minute 37. And the break point is at a different place in the clip each time. So what we can do is have a listen to the different versions. I mean, that was absolutely seamless. The other thing you can do is click on here for live trim and you can actually adjust the duration yourself. And it works out what to do. Now, let me undo that. Go back to the full length, click on here, go to live trim, do the work and it's done it for me. Absolutely brilliant. So that feature is a huge time saver. And there's even more to show you than that. That's just a few of my favorite things. If you like this sort of content, think about subscribing, hit the notification bell. I'm gonna study this and do some more episodes as I get used to the tools. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode.